As, as you know, um, the month of February, we um, have been, we are going to be speaking through prayer and looking at prayer. And I think it would be a disservice if all we did was talk about prayer. And this church has been built on it. People are invested in prayer. And so we're going to continue down this road. Um, and as was said earlier, um, we encourage you to um, jump in with the city of Penticton with what we're doing with the prayer books. There are some out um, in the foyer if you're needing a book. Again, I would even say, hey, grab a bookmark. How do we build and become more regular in our prayer life and more consistent? And so we encourage you to jump in with that. Um, you know, and they're like, oh, we need the books right at the beginning. I said, man, there's a lot of parables about people jumping in at the end and they still receive the blessing. And so wherever you're at, step in and let's walk together in prayer and grow together. I just want to share quickly. So this past weekend, um, well, I guess we got back last night. The staff here, there were eight of us. We took staff and some spouses to a conference in Abbotsford called Soul Care. Um, and Rob Reamer is the guy who runs it. He is He's an alliance guy deeply influenced by Wimber um, in, in a real sense. And it changed our lives again when you run into Jesus. It really did. And so I don't really want to, like, we're looking at intimacy and family ties and how do we break wounding, how do we become healed. And, um, and I would encourage you to actually, if you know some of the staff, ask them, hey, what did God do in your life? Tell me about it. What did God do in our life, in your life? And it was profound. And I'm not even so excited to talk about what happened. I'm more excited to actually live what happened. And I think it's great to share these things. I actually want to live out the change that God did in my life. And we, across the board, experienced Jesus, discovered freedom, realized God had wanted to do a deep work in areas in our life that we didn't even know were needing to be touched. And that is our God. And he came and restored and healed and set free. And so we are excited for what is happening within us. And we're excited for what God is doing in the church. Because it is not for us. It is for us corporately to walk together. And as I, as I mentioned, we're looking at prayer. Um, last week was a bit of a broad stroke on prayer. Um, just laying it out. This is prayer. This is who we are. Elijah is a man just like us. Let's go and pray. Let's go stand in faith. It's an identity issue. We talk practically. How do we walk in this? And so this morning, uh, we want to, again, we're looking at prayer, a bit more listening, and even around prophecy is what we're going to look at, which is totally us. This is Vineyard. This is our DNA in listening to Jesus and in being willing to step out and share. And so um, I want to, we're going to begin this morning praying. Again, what I was just struck with last week and the, and the weeks before, Luke 11, just like I said, teach us to pray as you prayed. And that's what, I don't want to learn to pray as I want to pray, I want to learn to pray as Jesus prayed. And so let's, let's pray together. Jesus, teach us to pray as you prayed. Teach us to be that sensitive with the Father, to know what you are saying, to hear clearly, and to be willing to step into it. Remove the things that hinder us from hearing your spirit, from hearing you. Lord, the things that block our sight, we ask that you would remove them. I ask that you would enlighten our eyes, the eyes of our heart, to understand you. God, we ask that the things that hold us back from communication, you would remove them. God, teach us to pray as you prayed. Lord, we want to be one with the Father, one with the Son, with the Holy Spirit. So thank you, God, that your desire is to, to speak with us. We want to hear you and be changed. In your name, amen. So this morning we're going to be looking at John 10. If you have your Bibles, you can turn to John chapter 10. John was uh, an interesting disciple. He curled up against the chest of Jesus. He had this intimate relationship, um, challenging. And we're looking in John 10 specifically... Um, in, in listening to God is where we're going to be going. So I'm just, I'm going to read um, John 10, 1 to 21, and then we're going to pull out a few um, points. And then if we're going to talk about something, we're going to do it as well. So John chapter 10. Very truly, I tell you, Pharisees, 
Anyone who does not enter the sheep pen by the gate, but climbs in by some other way, is a thief and a robber. The one who enters by the gate is the shepherd of the sheep. The gatekeeper opens the gate for him, and the sheep listen to his voice. He calls his own sheep by name, and he leads them out. When he has gone out, when they have all gone out, he goes on ahead of them, and his sheep follow him because they know his voice. But they will never follow a stranger. In fact, they will run away from them because they do not recognize a stranger's voice. Jesus used this figure of speech, but the Pharisees did not understand what he was telling them. Therefore, Jesus said again, very truly I tell you, I am the gate for the sheep. All who have come before me are thieves and robbers, but the sheep have not listened to them. I am the gate. Whoever enters through me will be saved. They will come in and go out and find pasture. The thief comes only to kill, steal, and destroy, but I have come that they would have life and life to the full. I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. The hired hand is not the shepherd and does not know the sheep. So when he sees the wolf coming, he abandons the sheep and runs away. Then the wolf attacks the flock and scatters it. The man runs away because he is hired hand and cares nothing for the sheep. I am the good shepherd, and I know my sheep, and my sheep know me. Just as the Father knows me, and I know the Father, and I lay down my life for the sheep, I have other sheep that are not in this sheep pen. I must bring them also. They too will listen to my voice, and there shall be one flock and one shepherd. The reason my Father lays, loves me is that I lay down my life, not only to take it up again. No one takes my life from me, but I lay it down of my own accord. I have authority to lay it down and authority to take it up again. This command I received from the Father. The Jews who had heard these words were divided again. Many of them said, he is demon-possessed and a raving madman. Why listen to him? But others said, these are not the sayings of a man possessed by a demon. Can a demon open the eyes of the blind man? It's an interesting story. And so previous to this, obviously, can the demons open the eyes of a madman? Previous to this, Jesus healed a man on the Sabbath who was blind, and the Pharisees got pretty upset, really upset. And so he was saying, hey, I got, I got healed, and the Pharisees were like, who did it? And he was like, I don't even know who did it. <laughs> and they're like, how is it true? And they're accusing him and accusing him. And they actually said, give glory to God. Tell us the truth. And he said, the truth is I was blind and now I can see. And he goes, I don't know who it was. And the Pharisees got really upset with him and argued. And, and he goes, and they accused him. They, they told the man, well, he must be demon possessed. And, and he, goes, he goes, he can't be. He healed me. And, and they say, we listen to Moses. Who is this man? And, and, and they had this really harsh conversation, and they ended up kicking him out of the temple because Jesus healed him. They kicked him out. And uh, we don't want to be that way as a church. <laughs> we want to listen to Jesus. And I love in verse 31 it says, um, the, the Pharisees actually said to this man, they go, we know God doesn't listen to sinners he listens to godly people who would do his will. I'm really glad God listens to sinners. Oh, I'm really glad. And then they threw him out. And Jesus came and found him outside. And uh, he said, do you believe in the Son of Man? And he said, tell me who he is so I can believe. And he goes, you're speaking to him. And he got saved. And so that was leading up to it. And now we find ourselves in the story again and these guys are still really upset about it. And they're calling Jesus demon-possessed or possessed by a demon, which, to be honest, I think probably the Pharisees had them. <laughs> you can go look at it yourself. But they were probably the ones struggling with it. And that's a sidebar. So we're just looking in John 10 in prayer. And so this is an interesting teaching, and it has some very practical, cultural understanding. People understood sheep and shepherds in those days a whole lot more than we do today. Who owns sheep? Growing up, we had two sheep. One was black, one was white, blacky and whitey. Is... <laughs> we owned two of them. We would try to ride them. I don't know how they ended their life. All I remember is being chucked in the blackberry bushes. We owned sheep. They weren't smart. They were gross. They smelled that was about the extent of my sheep understanding. Jesus uses this example, though, of being a shepherd with sheep, and it is 
deeply personal on an eternal end, but it is also very deeply personal for us today in how we live. This story is not solely about at the end of your day, if you hang out with the shepherd, you will go and be with me at the end. He goes, right now the shepherd wants to lead you where you are at right now, here and now, know my voice and I will change how you live. And so it's this invitation, and Jesus is speaking to the Pharisees, as the passage said, the religious people, and um, there were some sharp statements in there that they didn't really enjoy, and so they make accusations about him again and again and again and again and again. Um, you know, can demons open the eyes of blind? That would be another question you can go hunt on your own, we, or we can talk about it later. It's a great question. Um, but this is the story we're looking at. And so after, um, well, we'll just, yeah, we'll just skip into it. I'll just say God is very interested in speaking to me and you. He's very interested in speaking to us. It is the nature of God to speak to his kids. It is in his nature to speak to us. It has been from the beginning of time, whether it was Adam and Eve walking, speaking, whether it was Moses, whether it was David, whether Paul's conversion, he spoke, whether it was Peter in a dream, he spoke, whether it was the Holy Spirit speaking, he is very interested in speaking to his children, to his sheep, <laughs> extremely interested. Who has had God speak to him before? Yeah, like God's very interested in speaking to his kids. It is called prayer. We listen. We listen to what he's saying. And so uh, I just want to look at a few quick little thoughts in this passage. So in verse 3, who hears the story? Well, the sheep. Who are the sheep? We are. Well, the believers are. If you know Jesus, that's, that's who the sheep is. And the interesting thing is, this is not an option. If you are a sheep, you will hear his voice. There's no option in it. So for many of you who are sitting here going, I've never heard his voice and I love Jesus, I said, I'm like, there's no options in this. We hear his voice. And so if I'm not hearing his voice, I'm going, God, what is it that I'm not believing? What is standing in my way? What is the opposition that is, what am I not believing? Because God speaks. Very, he speaks, believe me. He speaks loud, he speaks quiet, he, he thunders. Like how he got Paul's attention, they said, Paul understood it audibly, but everyone else said it sounded like thunder. He speaks. This is not an option. We hear. And I don't even think when God speaks, it's solely for us. A lot of the times he speaks, but often it's actually for others. He speaks to us for other people. We were, um, we were at this conference and... Um, there were some times they were talking about prophecy and, and listening, and then we ended up just breaking into groups with people we didn't know. We just had to sit down. And it was very much across denominational lines, very different. And we just sit down, and I was sitting with these two, two uh, guys, and they sat down, one guy's like, have you ever done this before? And the other guy's like, no. And he goes, have you? And he's like, oh, no. And they looked at me, and I'm like, oh, yeah. This is going to be awesome. And they're like, oh, no. <laughs> and we just would sit and go, God, what are you saying? And suddenly a word or something, I said, I just feel God saying this. And it's amazing how God speaks, and we don't know anything about these people, and we hit it. And you just share. Back at it. And to be honest, I think we as sheep, we need to know the shepherd's voice or we will be lost. We will get lost if we do not know the shepherd's voice. And so I start asking myself and I ask you, do I know the shepherd's voice? Am I tuned in to his voice? Do I know the shepherd's voice? And I think it's... Uh, it's pretty interesting in verse 5 or verse 4 and 5. It says, when he's brought them out, he goes ahead of them, and his sheep follow him because they know his voice. And then verse 5, it says, but they will never follow a stranger. In fact, they will run away because they do not recognize the stranger's voice. 
And sometimes I have followed a stranger's voice. And I go, I need to tune in to the voice of God. Do I know the voice of God? I need to learn the voice of God, to listen well to the voice of God. And I would ask you, what does, what does the voice of God sound like to you? How does God speak to you? How does, how has he, how does he speak to you? And do you know it? And sometimes you go, I don't even, I don't think he does speak to me. Go, oh, you, you haven't learned his voice. Because he speaks. He's the God who speaks. Regularly. And I love in verse 3, he says, he calls his own sheep by name. I go, oh, this is a real interesting thing. God, what do you call me by name? What is the name that you call me? What is it? What is the name? And if I were to ask you, what does God call you? Because it changes how we live life. When we hear the voice of the shepherd, it dictates how the sheep live. So what does God call you? Or are you listening to a voice that is not good for your soul? And I've listened to both at times. You know, and, and yeah, there's, it's an interesting thing, prayer. This is, this is what it is. It's prayer. We need to develop a prayer life, a, a dialogue, not a monologue. A monologue is very much, I'm just going to dictate an act, an act of reciting things and walk away. That's not prayer. Prayer is a dialogue where we listen to Jesus. And we hear, and active listening means you actually speak it back to him. This is what I heard you saying, Jesus. Is this right? We share it back. And our lives are changed. So we need to develop a prayer life that isn't built on speaking. It's so much built on listening. And from this place of listening to the shepherd, we speak. And we hear and we change. Because I don't want to be led astray. Um, over the last, well, yeah, over the last couple weeks, there's, it's just hard. I've watched friends be led astray. They've listened to different voices. Friends that have been really close to me, spiritually really good, and they've listened and they've believed things that aren't true, and they've been led astray. Going, God, I want to hear your voice. You know, and there are times in Romans it says sometimes we don't know how to pray, and the Holy Spirit intercedes. Romans eight twenty six. Sometimes I go, I don't even know how to pray. And we go, Holy Spirit, come and help me to pray. Help me. Help me. I want to pray. <laughs> John Wimber, who, uh, I, the more I'm walking on this journey, I'm finding these nuggets with Wimber and the lifestyle of how I want to live, which is scary as all get up. Because <laughs> he felt spelled faith, risk. And he says, it has a strong personal meaning for me. Walking by faith takes us out of our comfort zone. He says, I love my security. I enjoy my friends, my family, and a good job and a nice home. (laughs) I was like, oh no. (laughs) Jesus. But I was thinking about comfort last night when I got home. And do I want to be comfortable in the flesh at at the expense of the spirit? Do I want to be comfortable in my flesh at the expense of the Holy Spirit speaking to me? And I would say, no, that's my answer. Scary as I'll get up because I know what's going to happen. And say, hey, go and speak to those people. Oh, Jesus, it's a risk. And I just started asking, who rules me? My comfort level or my shepherd Jesus? And so hearing, hearing Jesus is very personal very personal. It's changed my life. It's also, um, to be honest, I think because we gather, it's very community. And it's not just me. It's all of us come to here. We all bring a piece to go, this is what I feel God's saying for you. And we share and we live life that way. Um, The conference we were at, um, they actually did a session on prophecy. And I've talked to, I've taught on listening to God, some of the way he laid it out was so amazing. So I'm actually going to use some of his stuff because it was some of the most articulated material. And so just really quickly, what are some of the ways God speaks? I mean, I'm just going to ask you guys, what are some of the ways God speaks? 
dreams. That was very immediate. Who, who's the dreamer? There it is, yeah. Pictures. How else? How does God speak? Strong intuition, yeah. Scripture, for sure. How else? Circumstance. Huh? Weather. You're not, you're not at the coast, because if you were at the coast, it's, it's always bad. <laughs> always bad. It's gray again. Lord, what are you saying? It's a, maybe summer weather in Penticton. No. How else does God speak? Worship, yeah. So God speaks. And so just quickly, so I, I had written down, so whispers, still small voice of God, prompt, promptings, nudges from the Holy Spirit. There's sometimes you just feel this thing, oh, I'm supposed to go say this to them. I'm going to pray for them. And sometimes they go, oh, that can't be God. That's too easy. Follow the promptings. Follow what God says. The audible voice of God. Who's got the audible voice of God? Who's heard that one? Oh, we got a lot of hands. Audible voice of God. He speaks. It happened in Scripture. It happened to Paul. It happens to people. He speaks. In pictures, in Acts 2, dreams. He quoted Joel. Um, in Acts 2, they were speaking. And they said, your young men dream dreams. Your old men will have visions. Like, it is it is real, visions and dreams. He speaks. Who's had dreams or God has spoken to you? Yeah, a whole pile of us. Some of them I have no idea what they mean. I had this dream. I was like, that is really from Jesus. I have no idea. And you have to start praying through it. Sometimes body or emotions, sometimes you're, you're praying for somebody and you get pain in your body and then you just go, hey, is, do you have pain in your body here? God's speaking to you in that way. God speaks. Do we notice and do we pay attention to it? Sometimes I get a word. Who gets words? Something like you're just like, I got a word. I used to, for years, I had the Price is Right wheel. It was the weirdest thing. Be praying something, the Price is Right wheel was going, and then it would stop, and there was the word. It was the weirdest thing. I was like, I guess that's the way he's speaking to me. I didn't, if Price is Right was on at 10 in the morning. I never watched it. I was at school. Like, I, I don't get it. Sometimes it's like straight to who we are. It's right in the gut. It just hits you and you go, I just know what this is. Nature, he speaks to us through nature and scripture. He speaks to us. And the interesting thing is God speaks and um, it becomes the issue of we need to test it. Is it from God? Because there's, there's other voices that are speaking that are trying to distract us. And so we need to test it. And the, and the number one thing is, does it agree with Scripture? If it doesn't agree with Scripture, it's not from God. God won't violate his Scripture. You've got to line up with Scripture. And then sometimes I get words and I, I actually go, I don't know, I go test it. I give it to other mature Christians who hear. And I go, is this from God? Is this from God? You want to test it. And then the interesting thing is, Often the word is for somebody else, and then we need to deliver it. And this is where the interesting thing happens, because we need to deliver the word. And, um, and in 1 Corinthians 12 to 14, it's, it's these three chapters on prophecy. Um, and, and Rob was actually speaking about it, and I was like, this is really interesting. And there were three points in there, um, 1 Corinthians 14, 3. And he talks about prophecy, and he and he said, the purpose of prophecy, it's actually written right in there, 1 Corinthians 4, 1 to 3. I think it's up here. Where's the purpose of prophecy? There it is. Uh, yeah. Follow the way of love and eagerly desire the gifts of the Spirit, especially prophecy. For anyone who speaks in a tongue does not speak to the people but to God. Indeed, no one understands them but utter mysteries by the Spirit. But the one who prophesies speaks to the people for their strengthening, encouraging, and comfort. He goes, that's the purpose of prophecy, for their strengthening, encouraging, and comfort. And sometimes there's hard words. Believe me, sometimes there are hard words, and we still need to be very, very careful in the delivery method that it is for their strengthening, their encouraging, and their comfort. How do we do this? Well, it's by the Spirit. We need to do that by the Spirit. And so we're called to edify the church desire prophecy. Ultimately, listen to Jesus and be willing to share what he shares. And so we're going to do this. <laughs> Everyone's like, oh no. Well, because to be honest, if we won't do it here, I'll never do it in Superstore at the gas station. 
When God speaks to me and it's clearly for somebody and, and it's an absolute risk and I'm too scared to step out because this is where we get to practice because we're in a safe place with people who love Jesus and love, to get, love each other. We want to do the kingdom. It's not about me. It's not about us. It's about the kingdom of God coming. And this is part of the kingdom. This is part of who we are.